Hello, my friends, and welcome to day eight of the Painting the Wilderness Seascapes Challenge. Today, we are embarking to a tropical sunset. We are heading to the beach, a relatively rocky beach with some palm trees, and this is another one of those, you know, more detailed compositions where we have some trees, we have rocks, we have sand and sky and the ocean. And it might seem, you know, pretty intimidating to put all of them together, but I'm, I know that you can experience something truly magical. So let's grab your paint, grab your supplies, grab a candle, grab a snack, grab whatever you need, and let's get started. All right, I am really excited about this scene because it's another kind of fairly kind of complex scene, meaning it has several different elements, lots of different subjects in there. We have some trees and some rocks and some sand and the waves and the sky. And also, I think you will be surprised at how kind of quickly it comes together. Um, using the same layering and contrast techniques that we've used through many of the different projects that we've painted throughout uh, the last several days. So first things first, I am just taping down my paper like I normally do in my journal, extra long pieces of tape, um, just so I can wrap the tape around my journal in case you you know, have been wondering how I tape that down. I also make sure to tape top, bottom, and then side to side. I tape the, I use the pieces of tape order, I order them to be parallel so that the tape, the pieces of tape don't really touch each other in case you're wondering why I do that. So after I've taped it down, then I'm going to use the wet on wet technique for this first base layer. So I'm getting the whole paper wet with clean water, that's my size 10 brush, and then I'm gonna grab some yellow ochre and about a third of the way down from the top of the page, I'm going to start painting with yellow ochre and paint up. So I want the yellow ochre to be a little bit more vibrant toward the bottom. Um, and then I decided the yellow ochre wasn't quite orange enough, like it was kind of a little bit dull. And so I added some lemon yellow deep to the yellow ochre to just kind of liven, to brighten up that color a little bit. And um, painted that, you know, that whole kind of top third of the page. Then I got some Prussian blue and I added a tiny bit, just a little bit of Quinn Rose to, which is like a magenta color, to Prussian blue to make it kind of like a blue violet, but then it wasn't quite <laughs> as violet as I wanted. So now I added a little bit more Quinn Rose to get more of a violet color and I'm mixing it right on the page. Now the trick with this is because now that line of blue, I'm painting this kind of like the a sunset where the ocean kind of meets the sky, right? The trick here is that yellow and purple Yellow and violet are complementary colors. And so I don't really want the blue violet to like mix very very much with the yellow. And so I, as I'm kind of mixing, I'm, I have this like trio of colors, the blue, violet, the yellow and, and turquoise, that's phthalo turquoise on the bottom. I'm using a clean wet brush as a buffer between, especially between the yellow and the blue violet. And I'm always painting, if I'm gonna paint between the two sections, I'm always painting from yellow to blue. Always paint from light to dark. When, especially if you're worrying about muddying your colors, if you're worrying about getting a color mix that is going to be like not the best, painting from light to dark will kind of help alleviate that. And then also using that clean wet brush, just left a little bit of, let the water kind of you know, act as a buffer between the two colors so they didn't get super muddy. So after that, I let it dry. And now I am, we're going to paint wet on dry, kind of dry brush texture to paint some waves on top of where the ocean is. So I'm using a scratch paper because wet on dry texture, uh, that kind of dry brush texture is sometimes difficult to achieve. Um, with watercolor, depending on how watery your paint is, because, you know, if your paint is too watery, then it's going to paint pretty flat, right? So you need to have fairly dry, like not a whole lot of paint. And so using a, a scratch paper can help 
to just like get rid of some of the paint so that when you start painting on your real paper, on your painting, it can already be that dry brush texture. So I'm just trying to create that dry brush texture all across the ocean and I'm using different colors here. So I'm using that blue violet that we already had mixed for the previous layer. And I'm also kind of gradually um, blending in turquoise and then I'm adding in a little bit of viridian also. So for these waves, basically I'm just trying to create tiny little waves um, that have some kind of choppy texture to them. I am going to mix, I'm, I'm gonna paint the same kind of strokes just in, in different colors, right? Some phthalo turquoise, some viridian, some blue violet, and um, just kind of layered on top of each other. And then as I get down to the bottom, notice how I'm only painting these waves on that right hand side, right? Mostly toward the middle. That's because the left-hand side is going to be a beach. So we're painting the waves for the ocean first, and then we're gonna paint the beach on top of it. So before I get to the beach, I am just going to paint where I want the horizon to be, um, or where I expect the horizon to be. This was kind of a last minute decision. You don't necessarily have to do this exact thing that I'm doing right now, but I realized that like, I wanted to create some kind of line where the ocean ended and the sky kind of began. And so that's what that line is kind of for. Um, the left-hand side again is going to get covered up when I eventually paint the island and everything on top of it. So um, yeah, I'm not too worried about it. After I let all of those layers dry, I let them dry, I am re-wetting only the ocean. And this is because we are starting to paint the wet on wet layer for the island. This time, instead of yellow ochre, I grabbed some raw sienna, which is very similar to yellow ochre. You honestly could just use yellow ochre. You don't necessarily have to use raw sienna like I'm using, but I wanted it to be a little bit more brown. And so that was my goal. Um, so I added just a little bit of raw sienna and then also a little bit of burnt umber. And here, I'm not trying to create like a really, you know, flat, seamless, um, sandy layer. I'm trying to create texture and kind of like some luminosity here, right? Where some of the light of the paper underneath is shining through. Some of the pigment is maybe a little bit um, thicker when I, especially when I'm using the burnt umber. But I also want to make sure that this brown doesn't veer into the ocean. And so I'm um, use a clean wet brush again to kind of push away the pigment so it doesn't cover up the ocean. Now that I have that base layer, right, where it's kind of it's kind of softly blended from that brown up into the ocean that we painted before. Now I'm gonna paint a few wet on dry strokes, similar to like the kind of wave texture that we created in the ocean. I'm painting some wet on dry strokes with burnt umber and raw sienna. I started with raw sienna, but it didn't really make a difference. So I transitioned mostly to burnt umber. And here I'm, I'm just trying to create like a gritty, sandy kind of look, kind of texture on the page. I'm not trying to create sand. It's very important. The whole paint what you see concept, as opposed to painting what you know, is going to be really important for this piece. Next, uh, we're going to separate the sand from the ocean by painting some waves with gouache. If you don't have gouache and you are watching this before you start painting, then you could use masking fluid in the places where these waves are going to go. I especially, uh, uh, you know, for e for convenience and especially for beginners, I prefer to use gouache um, just so I can kind of, I you know, it's not as high stakes as masking fluid. Um, and I think it also provides a really cool texture on top of watercolor. So I'm dipping in the paste form of gouache so it's very thick. And so I'm creating this kind of dry brush um, texture where the waves are kind of foaming on top of the sand and also in layers throughout the ocean. And then I'm going back in with a clean brush and just kind of gently reactivating some of the gouache and feathering it out so that you know, like one side is kind of gritty and textured and then the other side is a little more smooth as it blends back into the sea. That's one of the other reasons why I love using gouache to paint like foam on the ocean because it, it can reactivate. And so you can blend it back in to kind of create those really fun blends. 
Now I mixed my own black slash gray by mixing Payne's gray with some burnt umber. And uh, you can use just regular black or gray if you want, but I like to mix my own because I think it just makes the color a little bit more bright. And to do, um, I did that in order to create the base layer for like these rocky, some rocky formations on the ocean. So uh, instead of painting like, you know, typical sand, we're painting some dark, maybe like, you know, igneous lava rock on the ocean. And this is just the very first layer. In order to get that rocky effect, we're going to focus on building contrast. So, but before we get to that, I am going to paint um, the first layer also of the trees. So this is basically finishing um, the under layer, as it were, for these uh, you know, things that we're painting on the island. We have the sand, we have the rocks, and we have the trees. And all of them are basically just blobs, right? They're just blobs. And this is where I want you to remember, you're not painting what you know. If you think to yourself, I'm painting rocks, these look nothing like rocks, I'm a terrible painter, that's okay. I've thought that too, but the truth is you're not a terrible painter. And the way to learn how to paint rocks is to remember that you're not painting rocks, you're painting what you see, right? And when you see, what you see when you look at rocks are a bunch of shadows. And so that's what we're trying to build here. And when you paint with watercolor, especially when you're trying to build contrast, you go from light to dark, right? So that's why we started with that light layer. And then we, um, which is fairly watery. And then we use slightly more pigmented, a slightly darker layer um, to cover more of the rock, but we left behind those light spaces. And now for the final third layer, I'm using an even darker version of that kind of black mix that we created by adding a little bit more Payne's Gray and um, using a smaller paintbrush. Now the trick here, especially with the darkest shadows, is that the darker the shadows, the less paint we need, okay? So that's why I'm using a smaller brush. I don't want it all to be completely dark. I want the darkest shadows to be more like low lights, if that makes sense, to just, you know, you know to add a tiny bit more contrast that gives it more depth. So the rocks are finished and now I'm just going to paint, use some gouache to kind of paint like crashing waves on top of the ocean. I don't wanna go overboard here, but especially now that we've finished the rocks, um, I am using that dry brush technique with the paste, with gouache in its paste form to, to just paint some foam on the side of the rocks, maybe a little bit more in the ocean and to just kind of create some texture on the beach and elsewhere. I'm honestly, I don't have tons of rhyme or reason in terms of, you know, deciding where to put the gouache. I'm just kind of eyeballing it and having a fun time letting my paintbrush dance across the page. I encourage you to do the same, especially when we're trying to get really like windy, you know, very foamy waves that are crashing up onto the island like this. The idea is not to get perfect waves. The idea instead is to, you know, let them be wild. And so you need to let your hand be wild also. So now that we've finished the waves, which again, I didn't really plan out. I just kind of, just kind of painted. Um, let's start building contrast with these trees. So this is technically, you know, right? Kind of like a grove of palm trees and other brush but I'm not, gonna sp I'm not gonna paint every single plant because A, that would take a long time and B, I don't know that I could do that justice and C, when you actually see that in real life, you can't see every single plant. What you see are shadows. And so that's what we're building, right? We started with that under layer and then a, a slightly darker layer on top of the green and then finally a darkest layer of green, which I created by adding Payne's Gray to my hooker's green. Um, building contrast in much the same way that we built contrast with the rocks. Almost exactly the same. We're just painting blobs and calling it plants, right? Calling it trees. So then I took some burnt umber to paint the trunks of the palm trees. And I painted them, I painted three, and I painted them to look wonky kind of on purpose. And then as I started painting the leaves, I was trying to maybe go for a more realistic, like, palm tree effect. And then I realized I just, I'm not going to do that. So instead 
I'm just kind of going with the flow and painting loose strokes in kind of a star shape. So it looks like there are some like little leaves falling, falling out. And then I'm building contrast in the same way, right? I started with like the lighter version of that green where it just looks like honestly kind of like blades of grass coming out of those palm trees, right? I'm not exactly, palm fronds probably looks different in real life, but I'm, I'm good with it. I'm okay with painting very loose because this is just for fun. And this is just about painting. Um, anyway, it's just about for fun. <laughs> I don't know how often I can say that. So then we build contrast on the palm leaves the same way. And I'm gonna do one kind of one stroke of contrast uh, with a darker brown on the tree, on the trunks of the trees as well. Because, you know, one really surefire way to add depth and to add complexity to your pieces is to try to add shadow, to try to add, you know, some kind of depth of field. And a way to do that, the way to add that shadow, to way to add, the way to add that depth is to add a slightly darker value color while still leaving behind those lighter spots. So we used that concept throughout this whole painting. And, you know, we used it on the rocks, we used it on the greenery, we used it on the palm fronds. Pretty much all three of those places had three layers, right? A light layer, a slightly darker layer, and then a darkest layer. Where the light layer was the whole base, the slightly darker layer, like the mid layer, was, it. that one probably took up the most space, but you still left behind some of the lighter layer. And then the very darkest layer was just used to add low lights, just used to add a little bit of contrast, a little bit of interest. And by doing that, did we paint, you know, very realistic looking rocks? I don't know, but they do look like rocks. Did we paint very realistic looking trees? Maybe, but you can tell that they're trees and they're interesting. And so, you know, that whole concept of paint what you see and also giving yourself, you know, compassion enough to say, it's okay that this doesn't look quote realistic because I had fun and I still know what it is, right? And besides that, you know, realism takes so much skill, but there's so much emotion and so much power behind leaning into your imperfections and using your imperfections to express something and to explore something, right? Your paintings don't just have to be to express something to somebody else. It can be about you learning to explore, you, you know, letting your curiosity lead the way as opposed to letting your criticism prevent you from exploring. So if you take away, you know, one thing from this project, it's that. It's I want you to learn to lean into really exploring and letting your brush dance across the page because it's fun. Okay, now to loved and learned. I really, really love the loose abstract effect. I don't know if you got that, but I did. I love that loose abstract effect and I loved the movement. Um, scumbling is what happens when you kind of let your brush dance across the page in random movements. And I really love the gradient between the sky and the sea. Some things I learned, shadows make a big difference in terms of creating depth and complexity. You also paint watercolor from light to dark and the dry brush technique takes a little bit of practice. It might take, you know, using a scratch paper to get it right and that's okay. All right, my friends, I hope you had fun with this one. I sure did and I will see you next time.